<laughs> Hi, everyone. This is Karen Newman, and it's July the 13th, 2019. We started on time today. It's unbelievable, but we did it. And I just want to say welcome to everyone. Uh, today in our room, we have Catherine, Christine, Deb, Don, uh, Jim, of course, Jay, someone named La, which is a very nice name, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Reinhardt, Sheer, Stephanie, and Ava. And who do you have in your room, Jim? And we have Angela and Lorjo and Nate and Rob and Jamie. Jamie. I have to turn around and look. <laughs> uh, Jamie, nice to see you back there. Okay, so just to just to start um, with a few announcements, this will be our last uh, webinar using Google Hangouts because uh, if you don't know already, YouTube is stopping their allowing of Google Hangouts to stream to YouTube, and uh, Google Hangouts is one of the few services that allows us to have a lot of people in the room. So as of next week, we will be broadcasting from now on from Zoom, still live streaming to YouTube. But if you will want to come in the room, you will need to download Zoom. So the people that um, the people that come in the links for the free webinars, but also for the, some of the, the for our Google Club, I mean for our Hukalo Club members who come in for the paid webinar, webinars, you need to have a Zoom account. It's a free account. You do not have to take the paid one we have the paid one which allows us to have a big room that everyone's welcome into but you do have to sign into zoom and so please try to go ahead and get that downloaded uh, during the broadcast and right before the broadcast we will not be able to help you download zoom so please 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 download zoom on your own and uh, we'll be ready for next week and then also coming up we have on august 8th through the 12th the fourth Ascension workshop with Jim and and uh, who all is going to be there, Jim? Tell everybody about it. Well, it'll be Jim, Angie, and we might we may have a couple with special guests. Mm -hmm. I I asked Rob Gothier to come, but we'll see what he's doing because they have a new baby and uh, he said he would love to come, but he has to see. So and also we're going to have yeah. some. Uh, uh, Gary Snyder maybe coming with Diane, his wife. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going to be going on. We're going to be doing white magic. We're going to be doing a white magic class. We're going to be doing uh, some healing, different kinds of healing classes, the healing teacher class. And we're going to be doing sign language. We're going to be doing, that's galactic sign language. We're going to be doing what else telepathy telepathy and just it's just gonna be a good time and the the biggest and most exciting part is to uh, be with everybody and get to talk to them and fellowship with them all the time so it's really nice and it's in a really beautiful place this time indoor plumbing so <laughs> that's a big plus and <laughs> Uh, there's two people to a room, uh, but if you want a single room, please let us know ahead of time. So, so there's still here. time to sign up, but it's coming up quick. Yes. Yeah. We need about five or six more. Come on, okay. everybody. Uh, yeah. Actually, I would love to see even more than that. Come. I would love to see 10 more. We have quite a few coming, about, what, 15? Yes. 16. 16 are already coming, but... Mm -hmm. Usually, this is when everybody signs up about a month ahead of time. Yeah. So <laughs> go to the website, hucolo.org, and you will see all the information about how to sign up. It's five seventy five dollars uh, for right. the entire time. That includes room and board and your lunch and dinner meals. Right. Right. Yeah. Correct. Perfect. Okay. So we will start with what, 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 what Angie? Um, I was going to say, are you going to announce on, on the uh, website, on Google website, that uh, it's going to be changed over to Zoom so that if people don't know next week and don't see this message, where is it? Are you going to put it on the uh, website? That I will do so, yeah. Okay, thank I will put it on there. Yeah. She has already planned to do that if you have a surgery in the bathroom. <laughs> no problem yeah it's a kind of a big deal and everybody who uses youtube that uses hang hangouts 
every broadcaster is going to have to change now. So um, you're going to start seeing, I don't know if we'll see the people along the bottom anymore or how it's really going to look. So it'll be, it'll be a new adventure. A new adventure. A new adventure in broadcast. Anyway, <laughs> so we'll start with some blessings. Um, we'll start with Dawn and then we'll go to Deb and then we'll go to your room. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And Dawn. Your hearts and minds, for are there are things coming that you may not understand but you wish to understand. Please know that you are open to the universe at this time, and we are speaking to many of you directly. Remember also that we have many different kinds of means to communicate to mankind. Please listen for the important messages. Thank you. Aika onaita so akaitoa Aika adaita onaya a okai tu saita naiko onana onaita usaita aya uakaita unaida okaisa Aika onaita unaika aya uta usaita onaika a uakaita to iaso saya ka unaita aya unaika uta usaita Namaste. Namaste. Remember to keep your joy and love ever present, for it is important to show the world your positive side. And it is important for the spirit to dwell in you at this time and be strong. Keep all your positivity up front so that you may know all that is happening, that you may realize what is going on. Thank you. Go ahead, Reinhardt. Um, Kamaki Yala Kamaka, Yero Kayuka Makatiko Kamaki to Kamakata, Maki Yoga Kari to the Makata, Yero Kamata, Inona Makaviuta, Makata, Makati or Kalakara. That's it. Thank you. As we break away from the ordinary times. We are coming into the extraordinary times when light workers and population of your planet will start to intermingle in a more multiple multiplicity way. I'm not sure of the word, but they won't they will understand that there is more going on than what is happening just in the 3D. Mm. Right. Okay. <clears throat> Angie, go ahead. <laughs> We are always reaching out to you. We are always okay. here for you. Let this time of ascension be bright with you. Let yourself feel and know the positivity that is always with you. Let you know what, how and when it is right to be. Thank you. Okay. Um, was there anyone else in your room? I didn't. I'm sorry. We have more people. Yes, we have lots more people coming in here. Hold okay, on. let's give it a moment. Hold on, we have to situate the room. Here they come. Uh, Hi there. Four chairs. Nope. <clears throat> wow, we have we have more people. Small room in there. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Is that you, Marge? It is Marge and James. James and Marge and, and David, David came in. 
David, Marge, and Jane. You guys, we actually started on time today, so <laughs> you're <Yes>. late. <laughs> All right, who's turn to pray? I don't. I think that was everyone. Oh, David wanted to say a prayer. Go ahead, David. Go ahead. Hopefully, I won't need water. Utane kikia shana hatu kukue shemehetia na hata. Ure ekete te na hana atu kukru eta ate ya shana hata kua sana hata wikishia. Ue mehesia hana atu kukue sana hata wikishia. Lena atu kukua ma eti wikishia na hala atu kukue shemehesia asha. There are those of you that are having dreams and those of you that are having visions at this time. Take heed to these crystal clear thought processes. Well, they will bring you information of the future. They will bring you information of what is happening in your life. And they will lead you and guide you in some ways. God is behind these and will always let you know the truth. Thank you. Okay, so we have some requests. Um, we have Yeshua, Metrotron, uh, who else? Uh, Archangel Michael, Toth. And Don, who was it you requested? Two people? Two species, the Nabrusi, sorry, the Nazuri or the Dabrusi. And Horus was requested. She, uh, we wanted Takur and Elijah, of course. And then uh, someone from the YouTube was asking if an aquatic being can come through. Okay. And, and Mother Mary is also requested, and Grindel. So everyone that we know was requested. Got Everybody you. you know was requested, okay. Yeah. Very good, let's see who comes through. Okay, thank you. Um, I just wanna say thanks everybody for being here and welcome. So Much let's see you. who comes through. All right. Greetings, I am Takur. Welcome, Takur. Many of you have requested a slight update on the government meetings that have taken place and are now over. These last meetings were very, very uh, good, in my opinion. Everyone is taking a different stance toward us than they did in the past. Usually when we were giving requests or asking questions, or asking about different things such as site to site and medical and things of that nature, we would get a solid no. But right now, we're getting a maybe. So it's not even a maybe, but it's all right, but. They have many different excuses, many different things that they are um, I'm trying to say, but they cannot say it properly because they don't want to say yes. But they do want to give us a little bit of a an in for the future. So they're fearing that the the world that they live in or you live in is in trouble, and they are correct. And they do and will need outside help eventually but they must ask for it before we can give it to them. So at this point, there is a little bit of a movement toward us, but not enough to be a yes, that we can do uh, things for them, but they are considering it. They have a lot of excuses and a lot of questions. So this is a time for uh, prayer and uh sending energy to your governments because we need them to start understanding more positively how things can be influenced from the outside mm. now the next meetings are in january we're not sure of the dates yet but we know that january is tentative for the next government meetings there were many of you there at this one this was the most well attended 
uh, meeting that we had. And so it was really amazing to see that almost 200 yeah. people were there, uh, in 200 humans. Mm -hmm. So it was a good, a good meeting. And many of you spoke. There was about 40 or 50 people. No, it was actually how many people spoke? 52. 52 humans spoke. Wow. So that was quite a lot. And they spoke in the first Saturday and Sunday and Monday. Those were the three days allotted to humans to speak to the governments. So it was quite, quite a good experience. Very good. And um, there are some questions for you, if you will take them. Of course. Sure. Sheer, go ahead. Greetings, Tucker. How are you? I am well, and you yourself. Uh, I'm doing well. Actually, I want to ask you uh, to help my mother. Her knees? Uh, hmm? Her knees? Uh, no, actually, she had a test. I'm not sure what. And she she's supposed to get her results in about eight days. And I don't really know what she has. Uh, can you just do a scan and do whatever you can? Yes, I can I can check that out. We usually, whenever we check you out and Nivi, we check out your mother and father as well. Okay, so anything that you can do in order to help her, she's also anxious to hear the results. So anything to calm her down and to heal her in the, uh, you know, for this period of time until that we'll thing can be resolved. We will give her a relaxation infusion. That usually mm -hmm. helps. And we'll check on her every day and see how she's doing. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Jay has a question. Go ahead, Jay. Great day, it's occur. Greetings. I'm glad we can speak again. It's been a while. It has been a while. Out of curiosity, for the first time, I would like to know if I spoke in the meeting. Yes, you did. And did I speak clearly? Absolutely. You spoke very clearly about um, your wanting first contact, about site-to-site uh, -site, uh, interactions, and different things of that nature. I'm glad. Thank you for the, um, the feedback. And my question, well, I wonder if some people also have these types of dreams. But every now and then I have dreams that involve children and they are very precious to me for many different reasons. But for some reason in these dreams, the children seem to be held captive or there's some kind of negative energy attached to them as if they are being, well, that's the main point that they are being held captive. And I would like to know a little bit more about that. There are places that have children held captive, but they are, these dreams are about your planet and not about anywhere else in the Correct. universe. This is about the, uh, the different places where they have taken children into custody and separated them from their parents. And hopefully they will be uh, put back into society soon. Most of this is about immigration. Some oh. of it is a, a, in other countries, but some of it is about the immigration and what is going on there. There is others, uh, children that are captive, but they are not in this country. They are in other countries that need to be uh, freed, and this has always been the case. But now it has become more uh, coming to light and is uh, more in the attention of the world and will be brought to light even in greater ways. Thank you. And one more thing. Can they see me? Because sometimes I speak with them, if I understand yeah. correctly. Actually, some of the children are innocent enough to be able to see uh, those that are visiting from outside, from different dimensions or different areas. You go in astral, which is... Uh, they can see you it's it can be a little frightening for them because they uh 
don't understand where you're coming from and they do see who you uh, that your face and it's friendly but it's sometimes a little frightening to see someone different so um it's all right though there it is like many of them can see so it it makes a difference Sikur, thank you so much i really appreciate it and god bless you and your civilization thank you much love to you as well juan Thank you. Um, Christine has a question. Yes. That kind of took me off. I was going to ask you, um, wow, does this mean that um, in our dreams, we, we or meditations, we can visit these children in these camps? Yes. And um, oh, God, that is so good. Um, that is really very good. Good. I was just sending light and love. Um, also, I was going to ask, um, was I able to um, speak at the um, at the meeting? Yes, your subject matter was a little different. You were talking about care for animals and different things of this nature. There is, you had a very good speech about communication and uh, upbringing of animals which was different and very um, informative. Christina, I muted you just for a second, but if you have to talk, please unmute yourself. Sorry about that. I don't have any birds in the background this time. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, I was wondering, um, is it because we all are not just because the world seems to be falling apart around these people these leaders that see things we don't see but also because um we are putting in an appearance as citizens that's kind of having them lean a little towards opening up i i do believe that the more humans that attend these meet government meetings the greater this their sympathy is toward us because they they believe and they actually know that these are some of the humans that they are watching so they see some of them in astral and recognize some of them and they know that they're not just uh this is not fake people but they're actually people that they know exists and um our uh, the United States government. Do we still have people coming to this? Oh, yes. Many. Actually, there was at least eight representatives of Octon, eight different uh, American humans, whatever, from the United States. Uh, remember, the meetings go on 24 hours a day for about 10 days. So you can't not have one person stay there the whole time, all the time. Yeah, looking out, and uh, they do get a recording of this after after it's done, but only it only goes to those that attended the meeting. Okay, um, I was going to ask you who um, in our government was going. In your government, your president and your vice president were there also your chiefs of staff a few of them your secretary of state um but they like i said they were back and forth in and out but there was quite a few there was eight just mostly the president vice president and uh, uh, some of the cabinet Christine, I had to mute you again, but Christine, are you there? She is muted. Yeah, I had, I muted her because when she's when you're talking, it's feeding back through her speakers. So she just has to mute herself after she talks and okay. before she talks again. I, I lowered my volume. Did that help? No, you just have to when you stop talking, mute yourself while you're listening to Jim. And okay. then Un then, then unmute yourself when it's time to talk. Well, I <laughs> occur, but that's all right. 
I'm so sorry. When you're listening to Takur, sorry. And Jim, <laughs> or anyone else by that. Any item I was visiting. Go ahead, Christine. Okay. Um, so that's one side of the government. That's the what we call the GOP. What about the Democrats, the people on the other side of the aisle? There are there are some of those there as well. There's like, a balance. Like um AOC, like, like um well, I was just wondering who on the Democratic side was listening. There are those that are not in office that were sent. And <clears throat> although um, although the president did not like that, um, <clears throat> one of them was Clinton. Oh. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Much love. You're welcome. Okay, Trinity has a question. Go ahead. Hello, Takur. This is Safira. <laughs> Greetings, Safira. Yeah. I have two different types of questions. Uh, one is about the government meetings. So, is it that all the governments have to sign an agreement for a specific year or a specific date when the intergalactic um, representatives come and speak through the TV or, you know, whatever your final plan is for that. Um, is that you're waiting for all of them to say yes and give a specific date? Is that what's happening? Partly? Not exactly. It would have to be a majority rule and it would have to have uh, most of the most of the largest countries with the greatest populations. And they all have to agree that on one particular year and date, correct? They would have to agree that it would be plausible and agree that it should happen. And then we'll discuss it further. We have to just get them to agree that it should happen first. Right. Um, okay. And after that, we will work on a date and time or whatever, yes. Okay. So <laughs> there have been many government meetings over the last few years, and it seems like the topics are always the same. Is there any advancement in topics, or is it just a well, repeat? They want to talk about technology. Mm -hmm. Yes, they want to talk about technology. They want to talk about what is available to trade for them with us. Uh, but they want it only for their, uh, there's lots of argument about that because each government wants their own private meeting with us, and that is not possible. <coughs> is Jim okay? Does he need some water to occur? <clears throat> I, I will make sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> okay. I, I also heard that I gave a speech. I'm, I'm trusting that that's true. Yes, you were, but yours was more of a personal nature uh, about the kings. Oh, really? What did I ask? Oh, you you asked that those that are in intermingled with different planets should have a little bit a different, uh, a little bit different kind of treatment. Okay, I know what you're talking about, but I I don't I didn't imagine I would state something like that publicly. <laughs> yes, why not? I see. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, so my other question <clears throat> is about the um, there's been a there's been an increase in large earthquakes around the Southern California area, uh, moving up through Alaska. Like the Ring of Fire seems to be activated again, and reaching out to Yellowstone a bit. Can you give us some information on that, please? It has been activated since the beginning of the year almost, but mm -hmm. we thought that it was going to calm down at the beginning of July, but it actually just uh, started to become more active at that time. Mm -hmm. So um, there are going to be more activations uh, in uh, the tectonic plates. The, they are not settled down yet, and pressure is 
still building in the California, Alaska and Alaska areas. And also all the way down through uh, Mexico and even into South America. I see. So is there a possibility of a really big one happening in in California, there's a possibility of a um, a very big one. We're not sure of its intensity as of yet. It was predicted to be about 7.5 to 7.6, 7.5 or 7.6. But now we see that it might be greater than that. Which would destroy a lot of area, correct? Well... Since it is where it is, it it is safer. It's that it's farther away from the cities. It, the epicenter mm -hmm. would be farther away from the cities than other earthquakes have been, but it will still in, affect them. But we don't know how big the earthquake will be, and there's nothing to do to really stop it unless it mm -hmm. stops itself and but we don't see that happening. I see. Okay. Uh, thank you very much and many blessings. Many blessings. Thank you. Um, Catherine has a question. Go ahead, Catherine. Catherine. Sorry, it took me a second to unmute myself. How are you, Takur? <laughs> Greetings. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. I had a question regarding if I spoke at the meetings. I know I was there, but I don't know if I spoke. You, I, actually, you didn't speak, but you answered several questions that were uh, asked by the governments. And so you played a, a very important role because you knew that they that you were one of the people they were going to ask questions to. And you did very well at uh, answering them. Um, do you mind if I, uh, can you tell me uh, what the nature of the questions were that I answered? The nature of the questions were about human involvement in uh, exopolitics. Basically, they wanted to know why humans were so interested in having aliens come. They, because they felt that they were doing a good enough job uh, running the earth, although that's what they said, but they, they actually don't believe that. But they did say that. And they, so they were asking questions, why people would want aliens to come and run their world or help them run the world. But the thing is, you answered by telling them that you didn't want the aliens to come and run the world. You just wanted them to be friends with the world so that we can actually communicate with the galaxy. Um, that was the answer you gave on that one, which I thought was an excellent answer. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Also, um, when the earthquakes in California went off, I have two dogs. One is extremely energetically sensitive, and they both got really bad stomach bugs. I was wondering what we could do to help those who are energetically sensitive. I know as humans, we feel it a certain way, usually as emotions. Uh, is there something we could do for our beloved fur, furry family members uh, that would help them? Yes, you see, when when the earth is that, they feel and know what's going on under the ground. They sense it and feel it in a greater way than we do. And so they are much more nervous about it and um, are very unhappy about it. So... It's very little you can do to stop the earth from shaking. So, but what you can do, I can come and give them a, each a relaxation infusion if they need it. I would appreciate that. Thank you very much. That would help calm them down a little bit. It might not do everything that's necessary, but um, they do feel that there is something coming still. They're still sick, aren't they? Hello? I think she dropped. All right. Okay. Okay. If she comes back, we'll pick her back up. Um, we'll go to Daniel. Daniel, you have quite some questions. I don't know if you have a mic or not. Um, 
do you have a mic? Can you unmute and ask your questions? There you go. Uh, yes, yes, I can. Okay, go great. Go ahead, Daniel. Yes, Dukur. Hello. Greetings. Nice to speak to you in person. Uh, I did want to I want to confirm if I did spoke because I remember asking uh, one night last week. Um, it's hard for me to hear you. Did you ask if you spoke? I spoke to that uh, meeting. Yes. Yes, you did. And what you were, uh, you were speaking about um, why it is important that the world become part of the galaxy at this time because this is the right time, it is the right uh, energy for a mixture with the galaxy. Ha, that makes sense. Well, that's a lot of sense, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I have one more uh, thing. I have a, a very interesting relationship with nature. So if I think or feel a certain emotion uh, the wind or the rain will react. Uh, I just want some feedback on uh, what do you think of that? Well, there are there are there is someone in the room here that has those same abilities um, that can actually interact with nature and energetically change what is happening, and sometimes uh, by command and sometimes by intuition. So therefore, it is a time when there are certain people around that will be able to control whether uh, calling animals to them, uh, different things that Mother Gaia has uh, given to you and to them that will be helpful in their future. Remember to use it wisely and carefully. Thank you for the uh, tip. Thank you. You're well done, Karen. Thank you for letting me speak. There, I did want to say something else to him, and that is that in the future, these things will change and uh, they will become more meaningful uh, because your mission or something that you need to do will include these gifts. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Is there a question in the room? Yes. Come over here. Well, it's just uh, two quick questions. Uh, how come they don't remember speaking and how did they go to the conference? Exactly? Okay. The reason why you don't remember speaking is because the fourth dimensional energy is not strong enough with you yet to have your memory completely activated. And you go in the astral when you are sleeping usually and the reason why you don't remember that is because the fourth dimensional energy just started to be released in the end at the end of 2012 so that's the reason and what's the other question um well i guess you answer it how would you get to me yeah uh it's in the astral mm -hmm. yes you you go to sleep and they come to you uh and ask you if you want to go to the meeting mm -hmm. they know who is aware of the meeting and they know um, that you're interested in it. So if you are interested in, they come and take you. You can say no and you, or you can say yes. I know I wasn't there. You wasn't? I don't believe I was. <laughs> All right. I, I'm, actually, I think you were there one day. That's not surprising. Okay. No, you were there one day. You didn't speak though. This was your first time. So you decided to listen and uh, gather information. But I think that next time you will speak. Cool. All right. Thanks. Okay. Hi. Um, we have a question from Ava. Yes. Hi. Uh, greetings, Tekar. Greetings. I am one of these people who had these baby dreams, but t this morning actually I had an extremely strong dream, which is. <laughs> must be some meaning um, about having and holding this baby. I, I still remember how it feels. And that's very unusual for me. And I hope it's not reality. <laughs> so, um, and, uh, and the more I often wake up 
easy and this morning was even that my ear ears were uh, clogged and one is still clogged that's very unusual and um, i don't know if it's earth changes and some or something personal i have no clue what's happening if you can give me yeah. the call. Well, you went into the astral to find this child there is a certain child on palana that you are especially fond of it's a hybrid child it looks very human but you I have a very strong attachment to it. And whenever you go out and um, are close to this child sometimes, you this really strong sense of reality is there and you're able to remember it. And when you come back, the pressure from the pressure from all the different things that you've been through in your travels actually clogged your ears. That's fascinating. Thank you so much. And I also want to ask about a little more what's happening on our planet. The area where I am, which is East Coast, East Coast of United States, Rhode Island, seems like having one constant heat wave right now, which is kind of unusual. Uh, so if you wouldn't mind commenting, but in general, a little update on what's happening in this planet besides California. Well, yeah. For us. Thank you. You're going through the grand solar minimum, which means that the sun is at sort of a different, a different kind of, let's put it, say, attitude. It's very calm. However, it's very, it has uh, been predicted that the world uh, climates will change. And the first thing will be a great deal of heat. But I'm afraid that that is only the introduction to an ice age eventually. It will not, it is not a, a, as much a natural global warming as it is a chemical global warming, which is being caused by many different things. And even those from outside of your planet are trying to affect that so that the atmosphere changes, so that the planet is terraformed for different species. Now, this is being stopped on all levels as possible, but it still continues to happen a little. But you as Earthlings have contributed to the imbalance of the atmosphere and, the, um, and some of the things that are uh, happening with it. So it is easier for outside forces to come in and even take that farther because of the aerosol cans and get the uh, exhaust fumes from cars, from all the different uh, waves that are in the air. Uh, there's so many things affecting chemtrails, affecting the atmosphere and the um, upper portions of the ionosphere, et cetera. So it is that it is a man-made global warming. There is some uh, of this going on from the sun level as well. It's also natural, but it's exempt. It's uh, uh, made greater by the fact that Earth is uh, has made themselves a little bit more delicate and easier to get to as far as changing of the climates and heat and that kind of thing so you will be experiencing a great deal more of that and if if it works out the way that it looks like it will change eventually into an ice age not long from now i'm not saying within a couple years but within a century Okay, so we need to start preparing. That's very interesting. All right, my last question. Um, could you be so kind and tell me, tell us a little bit more about kind of who we are because I'm not quite understanding there is um, in terms of kind of like layers. Uh, we have this soul, which is kind of like essence and then there is this astral 
do we feel in astral i know we can die but do we actually feel in astral do what are yes. our other layers let's call it besides well, physicality can you a little tell us a little bit more about what is what and how it functions i would really appreciate that thank you well there's the soul the spirit and then there the spirit the the emotions the body there are so many portions to you to you as an individual when you go out in astral you're taking the spiritual part of you with you but not the soul so therefore you're just leaving uh, you're taking a spiritual part of you out into wherever you're going now the soul is the creative part of you that god has created and put all the different uh things in there that are really you including everything uh all creative abilities and everything you get to choose what you want to do in this life and you get to express yourself the way you want to express yourself you, you put yourself on this place for a reason and that reason only you and god really know and maybe your higher self or someone in spirit but the thing is to try to explain all the different parts of uh, a being is very difficult. I can say it simply because as you are mind, body, soul, and spirit, but that doesn't really cut it when it comes to really explaining it all. Your body is left behind when you leave, go in astral. Your emotions go with you, uh, but only to a certain extent. And when you are in astral, you can feel, you can sense, you can know, but you are not developed or evolved enough to bring all that back into the, the body and have the body remember everything. It goes to the subconscious because everything that you do goes to the subconscious as your personal Akashic record, meaning that even if you go to the astral, whatever the body's doing, on earth at that time and everything that the astral is doing is all recorded in the subconscious so that is just part of what i can tell you about it it's so multifaceted that right now it would be it'd take a day to or a class to explain the human and how it functions in in the astral and in the spiritual and in the soul realm and uh and in the physical realm how they are all similar but different but it's a wonderful idea for a class and thank you so much lots of love to you thank you you're welcome there's a question here in the room okay yes interested about um the speak up please interested about um the, the dream I was having last night, I felt um, like I had this dream where I felt like I was floating. And then when I woke up, it, I felt like the body sensations in the dream. And I'm wondering what the dream was about. Because when I woke up, the energy was really strong. And I've never felt the energy like that before. This, this is a time when these things will happen. You are having what they call a interlocking dream your physical sensations and of that you're having on the earth and your dream state are interlocked because when you came out of your dream you were feeling the same way as you were uh yeah, in in the physical you were feeling the same thing as you were feeling in the dream now the reason for that is because you are becoming somehow more connected to uh, the outer realms you, you must have picked up a new gift recently or something of that nature that is uh, bringing more energy to your being. Many of you are experiencing that as well. When you get a new gift, when you feel a new spiritual um, attentiveness or uh, light language or whatever it is, it can actually trigger some greater sensations some greater connectivity to the earth, to out, outer space, to aliens,
to all things that exist. So, and even to, of, car, of course, to God and the sensations that you would feel outside of the body. So, these things are happening now, and they are ascension symptoms, really. You will, they are part of what you call the ascension symptoms. So, maybe the light language contributed or something. Yes. I, I would th think it did, yes. Thank you. And I also was um, curious about uh, anything that I might have said or what you would share about me being at the government meetings. You were at the government meetings, but um, I, I'm i not sure. I don't remember you talking. Uh, but, you just said that I did speak. I don't Okay. I touched briefly on something about peace. So you did speak. I would have to look to see what you spoke about. Uh, obviously, you spoke very briefly. But there were so many that spoke, I can't remember them all. But thank you for speaking and thank you for being there. I appreciate that so much. And um, I know that there are several others of you that have spoken at the meeting or was actually just there in some way. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. You're welcome. That's all. You're welcome. Thank you. Tika Reinhardt has a question for you. Greeting. Greeting, Tikia. This is Reinhardt. Greetings. I'm a um, little bit um, wondering why I had uh, two or three weeks ago suddenly in the morning uh, hurting my right side of the jaw and ear, and it is very slowly uh, decreasing. I still feel it. Um, had I been also in the astral, or had I been somewhere, I cannot remember. I have nothing. I, I don't remember anything. So, yes, these are. I, I ask you. Yes, you were at the you were at the meetings as well, and mm -hmm. um, sometimes when you're at these when you go to these meetings and stay for a period of time, they can have physical reactions to the, when you return to the body. Um, when people come to the uh, colonies and they work out in the in the workout rooms in the colony too, many times I hear them say the next day that they feel tired and their their muscles are sore. This is because the astral has brought that memory back to to the physical. Although they don't remember working out, they don't remember what they did, they still are feeling what has happened. And I believe that is probably what is going on with you. Something had happened. It was rather noisy at times at the meetings. So I'm wondering if you um, uh, got jostled around or something at the, at the meetings. It wasn't intentional, of course, but there were quite a lot of humans there. So I am not sure what happened, but oh, okay. we, we can look into that. Yeah, thank you. Because I I was troubled to think my teeth were going bad, you know. So I, I was really um, wondering. I knew that um, the healing process will go and it will be healed. But still there's there are thoughts about something else, you know. But yeah. Thank you very much that you cleared it for me, so I have a better understanding. Thank you. You're welcome. Blessing. I, uh, I will look into it as well. I will come and do a scan on you, and we'll make sure that it's all good. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, there's a question. Uh, there's several questions from the chat that, that we're going to do. Um, one of them is from uh, Francis. He's talking about wanting to know uh, information on his dreams, but he didn't state what was in the dreams. So I would say to you, Francis, if you can please type uh, what the dream is, then we can um, then we can address well, the question. Yes. All right. Um, any other questions? There yeah, are other there's many questions. Come. There's many questions. Ah. So I just wanted to I just wanted to state because I've got a lot of questions from the chat. Um, the first one was from Francis, but we don't know what his dream was, so he needs to type what the dream right. is. I, I wanted to say something else. Um, sure. men, many of you were at the meetings, and following the meetings, you probably will have some dreams, and be, because 
it made an impact on your subconscious. And these things happen. And when there is a great deal of energy being sent your way in the subconscious or in the astral state, you will bring that energy back to your subconscious and have different kinds of dreams. They will be energetic dreams about something that may have happened at the meetings, something that may have happened in uh, at the um, in reality somewhere out there. So you're going to be uh, definitely affected by uh, these kinds of things. Okay, okay. So can we have uh, Michelle has a question now? Yes. Hi, Tikur. Thanks for being here. Greetings. Um, I have a question about, uh, hi, I have a question about uh, Donald Trump. He he is a Palladian light worker. That's correct, isn't it? He is a, I don't know if he would be considered a light worker, but he is a Palladian. Well, I, I was just curious when, when um, he goes he to the- an agenda of his own that does not match the agenda that he started with, but that's all right. It's still a good agenda in most cases. Uh, we we are working with him. I, I was just curious. Yes. Sorry, I keep cutting you off. Sorry, I've got a delay here. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, how many Palladians? How many Palladians does he have when he, um, you know, when he speaks at these meetings? Like, did he have a bunch around him? Is that how it works? No. Um, what happens is they just take people from your governments and and uh, that are high officials that have the clearance to go to these meetings because not everyone has clearance to go to these government meetings. It is more third dimensional in thought process than you might think. Uh, they don't gather up all the Palladians or all the um, Arcturians or anything like that. It's just who is of highest clearance in the governments that are able to go and uh, sit and those that are in positions that can make decisions and those in positions that are able to uh, think clearly about exopolitics and it isn't about uh, intertwining the galactic with uh, the galactic on the earth it's more humans talking to aliens oh i see okay and um i understand that i was there as well yes. um with regard to uh, first contact could you be some um you know what did i say or did i speak yes you did speak once and you did talk about uh, contact. You're very interested in leaving the planet, it would appear by your your speech. So you were very interested in going to other uh, planets and visiting with other beings and leaving the planet uh, physically and having those come to the planet. You were very, um, uh, very emotional about that actually. interesting um and can you tell me as well uh do, do i have a, a lyran light language downloaded in me i know i have angelic but um is there a lyran in there as well there's a couple different ones lyran is in there as well yeah that's what i thought well thank you very much You're for welcome. answering my questions much love to you okay um let me let me go back to the questions in the chat because <clears throat> there's a lot of them and I want to get to them before we come back around for all the people in our room. Um, let me get here. All right. If we need we need a better system <laughs> than what we have at this moment. Okay. Um, Francis is asked, he says, I feel his star family is visiting him in his dreams. Francis Muses is saying that. Yes. Uh, it is very possible that... Um, that that is happening. One moment, please. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, it is very possible that that is happening. Um, I'm not sure I have to 
attached to them to see which uh, star family that is. But I keep thinking it's either Pleiadian or Arcturian. Those seem to be the two that are coming the most to the Earth and revealing their star seed families. Thank you. Okay, um, there's a question from uh, Firstborn. What's more of a statement? It's talking about what we were talking about with Jim before um, we started about this, all these people that have wanted to descend down to Area 51 um, if, if, to, uh, to see yeah. if we can storm the... Is, I, is that something that is truly, uh, that people are truly going to do, or is that... Well, it started as a joke. Someone made it as an event on Facebook, a group, uh, a sort of comic group made it an event on Facebook. But there was like 500,000 people that RSVP'd for this, for this event. And their, their thing was storming Area 51 because they wanted to see them aliens. That's them aliens is what they wanted to see. And I'm, that's how they said it. When I look down upon this, I see that there are some people that are actually serious about it. Yeah, some people, that's the thing. I bet there the are a lot of people now. that say, it's a great idea, but I would never do it. Yeah. But I am for it, so they signed up for it. <laughs> well, there, there's a, um, it, what they're saying now is that so many people signed up for it, and they have a certain date. It's for three hours in the middle of the night. I don't know what day it is coming up, but people are really going to show up, and uh have but it started party. as a joke. But well, they're going to have a party, but they really did want to take a, you know, that was the, the premise was we're going to go see the aliens. And a lot of people signed up. I think it. that it'll end up being a party because nobody wants to be in a shot or in a barrage of gunfire. Yeah. So I, I believe that only the most crazy people will think that. Mm. Uh, and there's another question from Lily Pad. She wants to know, is it true that all the earthquakes from Chile to California are induced or influenced by government technology? No, that is not true necessarily. There is some technology from outside of uh, your world that has influenced it, uh, but that was about, well, probably two or three years ago. But the governments are not trying to influence these earthquakes to happen. In fact, um, that is not something they want. Hey, one moment. Um, someone needs to be muted. Who needed? Okay. Gabrielle, keep your mic muted, please. Thank you. All right. Okay, thank you. When your mic's not muted, Gabrielle, it's like windy, so it's very loud for us. No problem. Okay. Uh, was there a question in the room? I do not think so. Is okay. there? All right. All right. We do have some more questions here from the chat, and then we have a lot more questions from people who want to ask another um, question of you. Uh, Richard Ding wants to know, he says, greetings to Kerr. Would you be so kind as to give me an infusion of healing to ease my lower back pain? I will be over when we're done. Well, that's kind. Okay, and Ecclesiastes um, eight 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 has asked um, the black stone of Kaaba K A A or K A A B A in Saudi Arabia, Maka, is Shungite? Is it Shungite based? Is it what? Uh, excuse me. Is it Shungite based? Which is S H U N G I T E Shungite based. I'm I believe I know what you're talking about. We don't call it Shungite, but yes, I know what you are talking about. And yes, I believe it is. It is a different material than uh, anything on your planet. Okay, okay thank you. Uh, Sheer had another question. Go ahead, Sheer. Dikur, how are you? Very well. And yourself? I'm good. I have a follow-up question. Uh, I spoke with my mother. Uh, she said she did a conos, uh, conos uh, don't know how to say it in English, conosopia. Uh, anyway, it seems that they found something, but it doesn't mean it's something that is necessary, bad, or critical. 
it might be a minor thing. Can you check it out? Yes, I will be able to check it out at some point, but um, I will go to her after the meet after these uh, these talks are over. Mm, okay. Very okay. well. Okay, and uh, Safira had a follow up question. Yes. Thank you, Karen. Um, to Kerr, I was going to let this slide, but I I can't. I don't know if you know what that means when someone says I'm going to let it slide. It means I was going to ignore it, but I can't because um, actually I heard the content of my speech and it wasn't personal. So maybe you weren't there when I gave it, if that can be. Um, how, how were you able to hear the content of your speech? Uh, through Quinn. And he told you what you said? Yes. And it was not about what I said? No, that was through Jim. No, actually, then you must have spoke more than one time because you did speak us about that. Okay, because like because the subject that you mentioned is very, um, the governments would not want that publicized at all. So I would be very surprised that I would be that insensitive to make no, it. No, not an insensitive thing at all. You don't understand. The government meetings aren't about being sensitive or insensitive. This is an open forum. Hmm. Okay. And my my other question was, the presidents don't have power to make their own decisions, as you know, I'm sure. They have a lot of um, interest behind them. They have a lot of uh, corporations supporting them. There's the shadow government, which is behind them. So when these representatives are there, how many, <laughs> I mean, what kind of decisions can they actually make? And are these other shadow aspects um, of, of governments being met with in some other way? Are, are, they, are they meeting with you guys in some way? Of course. There, there are many different aspects to the government meetings, but you're, mm -hmm. you're bringing so many ties into it. This is not about that. This is for them to hear and to discuss among themselves and with us, this is not just for us. This is for them as well. They also must decide and talk to people that they trust about these things. Now, with your government, I would say that your government, uh, your leader takes more things into his hands than most other governments. Perhaps Russia is another one that does the same. Um, he does a lot of decision making and um, does not really care what other people do. Well, it's it's not about caring. It's that, well, I understand what you mean. I, it is about caring partly. And I know that Trump has enough of his own money not to have worry about say, uh, being a puppet to other, other no, and it's factions. No, so I'm not saying he's doing bad things. I'm just saying. He's no, does more things into his own hands than some other governments. Right. So my main question is, the the your federations are appealing to uh, heads of governments, which for the most part cannot make decisions on their own, uh, and because, and I don't mean just that's about getting. True. That's not true. No. Because most I thought that governments in the world are smaller. You're thinking of just this government. You're no, I'm not thinking of just this government. But there I are other governments that are very uh, dictatorships and things of this nature, and uh -huh. they take things into their own hands, and they're able to make decisions. Not all of them are dependent on industries and, uh, and all other people that they are paying off or whatever. There are mm -hmm. many countries that they that I do not talk to their industries about their decision making. Many. Okay, thank you, uh, Takur. Thanks for answering that and all of our questions. Thank you. You're welcome. Ava, did you have another question? Uh, yes, I have a question about um, 
the Maasai tribe in Africa, in Kenya, they seem very, very different. They, they are very proud to be who they are. So their spirit, their spirit is not damaged, um, which is kind of unusual in Africa, if I may, if I, uh, may say. And they believe in um, group ownership. They are very generous. They are truly different, almost feels like different dimensional beings. Can you tell us a little bit about them as well as I'm so drawn to them? Was I ever them? Um, that I do not know at this point. Uh, I would have to go into your system and find out. But they are from another world originally. And so that's why they may seem different. They intermingled with your species, and but they have maintained uh, an original thought process even to this day, as well as the Aborigines of Australia. This is great news that they managed to be themselves. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, um, some other people in the room have had a question. Um, La has a question. Can you ask it or can you unmute? La? No? Okay. Um, Lao Wei can also has a question. Luai. I, I definitely say your name wrong every single time. L A U A E. She had a question as well. Pronounce your name for us. She's not unmuting. Okay. We'll, maybe we'll come back to them. She had, well, I cannot. Let me see who had, whose question was this. A La, I, La put his question or her question in the chat, so I'll read it. It says, uh, "Are the Blue Avians Collective still helping to guard the planet as, on Earth as well as the Sun? And is the Inner Earth people protecting the earthquakes?" The Inner Earth people are helping out with the earthquakes a little bit, and the Blue Avians are no longer in charge of the solar system but they do help the planet. The seventh dimensional beings are now in charge of uh, who comes in and out of the uh, solar system. But the blue avians are still here and are still helping with many things. Okay, um, I have the question from uh, Lao Wei and I, I apologize again for butchering her name. She says, I have thus far had technical difficulties with Zoom. Okay, she wants to, uh, she's saying, so if she, can't uh, get on she wants to ask her questions in advance she says she's new to this group and she hasn't asked yet if she's been to the colonies has she been to the colonies one moment please yes she is in she was invited uh, uh once already and that was at the end of june she went to the um government meetings just to see what they were like but she did not stay there and then she went to the colonies afterwards and she went to colony one, four and five. You know, colony one is telepathy and languages, four is channeling and five is sort of an entertainment or social area where you can intermingle with whoever you wish. Okay, perfect. And then she's wanting to know if she has any hybrid children not at this point. Um, if you would like hybrid children, let, please let us know. Okay. And then uh, she says, I was spoken to, but to by a collective yesterday who called themselves the ancients. They thanked me for my work. I was too flabbergasted to ask who they were. Do you know who they are? She's fascinated, she says. The ancients are a group of different ascended match masters from different planets. And when they come together, they call themselves the ancients. When they are separate, they have names that you might recognize, such as Ish or um, Fog or people of this nature, or Martin Luther King Jr. or someone of that. But when they come, they are an ancient group of wise and very powerful beings. Okay, perfect. And then uh, Trinity has a question, a follow-up question. Go ahead. About the aliens. Oh, oh thank you. 
<laughs> I wasn't expecting to get on again, so sorry about that. Um, thank you. Just one last question to occur for me. Um, you know, we had a question before about people storming Area 51 to see the aliens. So uh, are there any aliens actually there? Yes, there is. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, are they living or, or dead? Both. I see. So they can, is there a way for them to come in and out freely in that area? No. no. Absolutely not. This is a very um, top secret area. There are several areas in the world where aliens do exist with the government, of your government mm -hmm. and other governments. Uh, Russia has aliens. Uh, China has aliens. United States and several other uh, countries have their own alien because they found a ship or or they volunteered a long time ago and were grandfathered in to stay on this planet mm -hmm. when when we were told at one point that we were not allowed to beam people ab aboard or allowed to uh, go to the planet anymore by the uh, governments. Okay, so the live aliens at Area 51 have been there since 1947 from the crash? Are there no, were other crashes? No. Not necessarily. Uh, some of them have come and gone since then. The restrictions only happened in the, in the 2000s. There were several different restrictions put on us in 2006, 7, and 8. Okay, so the aliens which are there now were there they broken their own rules in other words or or they've been there since 2008 well and the final one was around 2013 when we started human colony there they were still able to bring certain people to the ships with permission but that also was stopped okay so yes there was all different kinds of rules made by all different kinds of uh, government decisions Mostly your government. Okay. And I assume, yeah, I, I, I'm I, so apologizing for that. But um, I'm assuming they reverse engineered uh, weapons from some crash ships. In other words, what damage can they do to you? And, and from how, which, which further, which distance they do you have? They have, they have uh, still they can get transmissions from outside your world that can beam in information and technological uh, information as well. The super space program that you are either aware or not aware of has many advances at this time that are far beyond what you can possibly imagine. And um, they are separate from your government in many ways and are able to uh, trade with the, with the uh, galaxy. So um, many things that you know or think to be true, your governments have much more information and can shoot us down if they wish. But you'd have to be a certain proximity to Earth, right? or, or not? No, not necessarily. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Um, there's a question from... Oh, Tony, great. Um, there's a question on a little bit of a different subject, but it's still in regards to governments. Um, Robert McKay is asking if the Jeffrey Ep Epstein arrest is a sign that the pedophiles are going to be start being brought to justice. There has been many arrests far be before then um, that just have not been as publicized as this one. And they have already started to bring pedophiles to justice. Even in the private communities, uh, you will find much more, uh, many more, I should say, uh, pedophiles have been captured and a tra human trafficking has gone down at least 10%. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, um, there's a question from Ecclesiast. He's saying, Motorcycle went through my room. <laughs> and ours as well. Did you hear that? Wow. Um, it, was, it says, uh, is it possible, um, okay, is there a specific type of information that type O negative blood carries? Yeah. 
Pleiadian mostly. Yes, there is RH and O negative blood that is alien oriented. However, mm -hmm. your your doctors do not look for that when they look at blood types. Mm -hmm. They do know that uh, historically and in scientifically that O negative and RH blood types are very unusual and cannot be connected to human life as we know it, as you know it, in some ways. They don't know how it started mm -hmm. or where it originated. Okay. Um, Chakra Vortex uh, has a medicinal question and it says, uh, what's the, well, maybe you know this or not, what is the best preparation for Shaga mushroom? Is it blood type dependent? Shaga mushroom? Yeah. I'm not sure, it, I'm not sure what they mean by blood type dependent. Maybe oh, is there a certain blood type that it works I, better for? I don't know what it is either. So Let me tell you about uh, mushrooms. They're, I believe they are looking at them as a species, which they are. Um, the ones on the earth are not as sentient or are not as evolved as those on other planets who speak to each other through the, their root system or their spore system, which is the base of their, uh, their being. Uh, they really don't have roots, they, but they have a base. And it is more like a small telegraph that sends information throughout the community. Now, these kinds of mushrooms grow in communities 30, 40, 50 at a time, whereas the mushrooms that are on Earth, not many of them do that. They can come up from a single spore, whereas these ones send out, when they do send out spores, they send them to a particular area and then a community is born. Um, I think they're taking, talking more about how to use this mushroom medicinally. Um, yes. So oh, what is it? I understand now. Mm -hmm. um, yes. It's no, it's not for one blood type. It's for all blood types. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, Gabrielle Starcy, Khaleesi Gabrielle Starcy says, do I have a hybrid child? Uh, how many boys and girls and how do they, what are they named? Oh my, she has quite a few. I can't go on, do that on air. That would be take too much time, but I would like to speak to her about that. Okay. You can, uh, you can get a, uh, sorry for all the, it's a sunny day here in the Netherlands. There's a lot of. Yes. It's warm coming. here as well. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but if you would like to have a session with Jim and then Takur can come through, you can do that through the website. Yes. I'm sorry, that's just too much um, sure. personal information. Sure. Uh, Lily Pat has a question. She said, what was the main reason Trump visited the Queen a while back? Um, I think that there were several reasons for that. For He wanted to make contact with her uh, for reasons, political reasons, of course, for uh, to identify that she's the longest reigning monarch on your planet and to uh, establish some kind of uh, some kind of uh, bond with her because he feels she's important in many different ways. Okay, thank you. I believe after all of this time we have reached the last of the questions for you to car. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's taken so long. We did so many. So thank you so very much for being here. Did you have anything you wanted to share with us? As you? No, but thank you for all your interest in the government meetings. And I hope many of you will be there next time. Even more. The more that show up, the better. Perfect. So, thank you so much. Much love. And I will bring the next person through. Have a great day. Much love to you, Tukar.
This is Metatron. Greetings. Greetings, Metatron. Much love to you. Much love to you as well. What can I help you with today? I did want to say one thing. Sure. The angelic inf influence on your planet is greater than it ever has been before. We have more angels working with humans now than uh, you have than we ever had in the past, and we are very very busy. So thank you for uh, calling on us. Thank you for your efforts with us, and we will continue to work with humanity in this ascension age for the next um, couple hundred years until you evolve through this into your next level of understanding, into your telepathic era, and to, into your new age of understanding era. We are with you. So this is a time of great joy for us, great um, love for humanity, not that we didn't have it before, but it's a special time of uh, interaction and uh, personal uh, growth for both humans and angels. Thank you. Um, we do have a lot of questions for you, if, if you if you can of take course. And also to uh, Laue, whose name I was mispronouncing, but she gave me the pronunciation. Laue says, please send uh, Metrachan her love because you've been watching out for her since she was a child. Of course. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Um, the question is first from Jay. Go ahead, Jay. For Metatron, I'm very happy and grateful that you came through, and I'm always extending my gratitude to all of the angels who are supporting me a daily on a daily basis. So thank you very much. And much love to you as well, and much thanks. Now, my question synchronistically speaking someone very dear to me had a dream a beautiful dream uh, she had a very brief conversation with an angel and the angel picked up a baby and told her everything was going to be okay can you please elaborate on that i believe this was about her own child she wants to have a child and this is the child uh that she's a little bit afraid to have because she's heard about childbirth and things of this nature but this is the child that will be born to her and everything will be all right although she has fears that things would not be all right but they will be yes and do you perceive this occurring next year i do not perceive a time period at this moment because that is up to her her decision-making is part of this. Excellent. Thank you very much. And one last question. Yes. Actually, do you have any advice for me? About this child? It, do you believe it will be yours? Yes. And so, therefore, this is my advice to you, is to be very happy, very yes. comfortable, yes. very... Um, uplifting and always stay who you are and show the side of you that is enlightened she will appreciate that very much and this child will be a joy to both of you Metatron do you feel it's going to be Genevieve it's going to be what Genevieve as a reincarnation yes And that is up to God, but it is a possibility. Okay. <laughs> I'm very happy. Very well. God bless you. Thank you very much. And you as well. Thank you. Uh, Catherine has a question. Go ahead, Catherine. Greetings, brother. How are you? I am wonderful. And yourself? Doing well. Thank you. Good. I have, I have a couple of questions for you, if you don't mind. Yes. Um, a lot of people seem to be struggling right now with uh, their guides. It seems kind of like the higher vibration, the guide that they have, the more uh, delayed response or somewhat difficulty um, they're having in connecting to that guide when they're having difficulty, especially since um, some of the stronger earthquakes have been occurring lately and 
some planetary uh, things are affecting us humans here. Uh, do you have any advice um, for how to kind of um, be more patient with our guides and how to reach them in a better way? Yes, right now there is a lot of Earth uh, atmosphere and Earth uh, problems uh, with uh, tremors and dysfunctions. Also, this is a time when negative forces, it's very easy for them to disrupt you. And it won't take much effort for them to do so because of all these different interferences. Be, be, be very patient with your guides. They're doing the best they can to get through. And they are doing the best they can to continue to help even though these things are happening. What my... Uh, what my suggestion to you is that you be very calm during this period of time. Stay as calm as possible, as possible, positive as possible, and loving as possible, because they can take this away from you very easily in these times of disturbance. So as you are calm, loving, and uh, positive, you will be able to reach through even better to receive the guidance that you need. But remember this, many of the things that you are looking for, you, you already know what to do. There are some things that you already are aware of. Continue to do those. And as you are continuing your, to do what you're doing in your awareness, other information will get to you because they see that as you proceed in the right direction, that information will come to you as you need it. Excellent, thank you. Um, also, I have a question as far as uh, alchemy of the soul. We know that we could reach out and heal others energetically. How can we reach out and communicate love and perhaps raise the vibration of everyone around us and everyone around the globe um, as far as, of course, it, it goes into their free will. How can we do that on a soul level? Yes. On a soul level, that is not as difficult as you might think. All souls are connected. So all souls in the universe are connected through a light of some sort. God has made connectivity a possibility with all people. So therefore, what you do is send energy through your soul light. Do a meditation, find your soul light, send out a great burst of energy through it. Many people will feel it and respond to it by doing the same thing. Find your soul lights, find those things that are uh, connected. And that way you can connect to all things in one way or another. And you can directly influence a particular soul if you wish. If you send energy to that soul, they will feel it, they will know it, they don't, may not know what happened, but they will, it will be distinguishable as a positive current that they have felt. This is how you interact at the ascension level with all things that exist. You have a connection to all things. How many of those connections can you send out energy to? All of them. Think about that. You can actually cause your soul to send out a burst that does affect all things. Okay, that gives me a lot to think about. Thank you. You're welcome. And also, um, I've been I'm very connected with Gaia. I feel things that's going on with the planet physically through my vessel. And I've had a new symptom and it's uh, pressure in my lungs. I don't have any physical symptoms other than it's getting a little hard to breathe when I um, get excited about spiritual things. And I was just wondering if you had an explanation for that. Yes, in other dimensions, there's not as much air. So if you are living in other, if you are going and visiting other dimensions, your lungs may feel uh, constricted um, temporarily. 
not completely and not always, and it won't be permanent. But as you rise up through the different areas of elevation in spirit, you may end up in another more uh, l or less dense uh, dimension, and that will cause a little constriction in breathing temporarily until you uh, get used to it. Okay. Thank you so much for taking the time to answer my questions. You're welcome. Okay. Um, who's next? Christine is next. Greetings and blessings, Mitchell. Um, Greetings. I wanted to ask a question about my um, my niece, who is also my godchild. Um, she um, has diabetes since a child, since she was a child, and she's been trying to have a baby. Um, is there anything that I can do besides sending her love and light and Reke for her to have this? Um, this is something in her soul contract that she came with through with that she is going to have to overcome on her own to do okay. the, to understand the lesson of uh, different diseases and different maladies that happen on this planet. The reason for maladies on this planet is so that you can be uh, you are able to uh, understand maladies of all different kinds around the universe once that is part of who you are. And so this is something that is a training for her and she has to be very careful with it. But having a child when you do have diabetes also means that the child may have diabetes. What I would do if I were you is pray that the child miss this particular gene, miss this particular infusion of uh, DNA within them and She's going to be fine with her diabetes, but pray for the child. Do you have a question? One moment. There's a question here, if you don't mind. Sure, go right ahead. What is it? Please speak up. Okay. It's a few questions. Um, uh, two different ones. Uh, there's a, I, I did a healing for a woman. I'm wondering... For her to be able to have a baby, I'm wondering, do you know if this is if, if this happened for her because I lost communication with her because of a different person? It will happen for her if she also wishes the same thing. Um, it is a matter of also if um, if it is meant to be for her, and we will pray that that is something that God will bless. Okay. And also any guidance um, to do a healing for someone or in any information that will help me to heal a person who has um, difficulty um, with uh, small spaces. She's something I feel like it was something in a past life where she has trouble. Yes, breathing. claustrophobia. Yeah, she felt like she was going to die and I wanted to be able to help her with that. Well, the thing is, uh, with that, there was a past life scenario that caused claustrophobia or agoraphobia. Any kind of fear that is that causes a great deal of anxiety was something that uh, has come through from a past life or perhaps earlier in this life. So, yes, we would have to talk to her and discover what happened and uh, heal that from the past source or from the, from so the present past, source. Bring her in and... Be able so she can sure she needs to she needs to face it she needs to uh, talk to someone about it yes okay awesome very thank you very much you're welcome mm -hmm. there's another question in the room another can question I finish my question oh go ahead well christine okay go ahead go ahead i was gonna um ask is there something that i can do for um my niece to um guide her through this because I take the godparent, um, mystically speaking, or spiritually speaking. Yes, you can actually have her understand that her child is, does not have to have 
what she has. You could also have her understand that what she has can be healed. You could also help, help her to understand that we are with her during all, th all parts of her life and we know what we need to do for her to succeed in her mission or her life force. So bring us into the equation a little bit more. Okay, is there a specific angel that she can talk to or? Um... I think her angel is Hezekiah. <laughs> Why do you okay. laugh? Because I don't know how to spell it. <laughs> H-E-Z-E-K-I-E-L. I thank you very much. Blessed be. Blessed be to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, there's one in the room again, if you want. Please go ahead, yeah. Yes. Uh, when angels come, when angels come, sometimes are they in like human form to yes. help you and sometimes they're mystically you feel them because i had some and right why is that all right angels come in human form because we want you not to be afraid because we're usually there to give a message or to give some kind of information or or something like that so we can become human looking we can become human if we wish, but we go to other species and we can look like them as well, just to, so you won't be afraid of us. But it still is very frightful to see a, a being come into your presence that wasn't there before. So looking as human as possible helps. The other thing is, is yes, our spirit is around. You can feel us without seeing us. And the reason that we are there for you is usually to give some kind of relief, calmness, or healing. We usually, if we want to speak, we will appear. But there are times when we know that some people will be too afraid to see anything. We will speak into your mind, the heart, or the soul. Whichever one is the best place for us to speak to that person. Okay. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Um, we had a, qu a question from Deb. Go ahead, Deb. Thank you. Hi, Metatron. Greetings. I had a very close relationship with you for a long time. And I know. Sudden, and suddenly, I haven't felt your presence and Actually, I've had um, a hard time channeling the last four or five months, and I'm really not sure why. I'm still with you. Something has happened uh, with a uh, spiritual disconnect. There has been some perhaps personal problems or things that have taken your attention away from the fourth dimension and higher dimensions. But you seem to be in all right you seem to be okay when it comes to your spiritual life so i'm thinking that there is something uh, within you that you need to uh talk about and i'm not sure what that is you have it suppressed so find this thing that you have suppressed so that we may uh, come back into a greater understanding with one another because it is you that have stopped this and not me. I know, you gave me this beautiful clarion call when, <laughs> I mean, I have a unique saying that you gave me. Yes. And I use it when that demon shows up. And um, I mean, I don't, I don't know what it does. I, I have a feeling it sends my family to me from Syria, from Syria, yes. but. Um, that's one. And I use it. Yeah. And it works. It does. It does. But now but you haven't I, been I, able to channel. And I haven't been able to get as close to you as I was before. So I think there is something there that we have to work on together. So yeah, I will I be I, I will continue to be with you. Yeah, because I miss that. Yes. And I do as well. 
we will be together again. I can feel the energies. I just can't identify them. And I didn't understand that. I can feel the, when I, I mean, I can feel it now actually very strongly. <laughs> yes. And I am with you. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. There's a question from Michelle. Great to you. Hi, Metatron. Thanks. Hi, Metatron. Thanks for being here. You are welcome. Um, I have a, I have a question about um, oxygen being robbed from um, the atmosphere. Um, you know, by negative uh, beings. Um, I infuse the atmosphere by pure intent, you know, to uh, re, -ox re -ox uh, how would you say, put oxygen yeah, back into right. it. Um, yes. in, rea in reality, is it making a difference? Um, I, I, chemtrails really tick me off. So I, it's been a big thing with me. Yes. Is it making a difference? Oxidiz yes, oxidizing the atmosphere will make a difference. And um, there are other things that are helping to do that, uh, but the, the trees and such, but and the plant life and all that are helping to reoxidize. But the thing is, uh, yes, some oxygen was stolen. It's, it's now being replenished. Um, it wasn't uh, stolen in a, a great enough degree to cause any major problems, but it has been replenished. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, there's a question from uh, Safira. Yes. Oh, <clears throat> thank you, Karen. So, um, Metatron, uh, we're supposed to have a very close relationship, but I've never felt you at all, and I don't feel um, any ETs or angels around me, even though I'm supposed to be channeling them and all this kind of stuff. So, um, and I don't think it's just because of me that I'm just, you know, thinking in such a way that doesn't allow it. But uh, do you see any other blocks there, some intentional blocks put up perhaps around me? Yes, by you, you've expressed that you don't desire to be in this realm any longer. So there's not, there is some difficulty with that we we really can't get through to you if you don't really want to be where you are so you need it's not just you there's other things involved with that too it's the area the space the uh the thought processes that are around you so we need to clear the air there so that we can get through a little better yeah, I'm, my, I haven't, it's been a challenge to find the right um, physical environment for a while. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're okay. not happy with your physical environment you're, and your social environment either. And in all things taken into to consideration, your spiritual environment is also lacking there. So... Mm -hmm it's it is that how can how can we get through when there's so many deficiencies we need to find a way to build that up okay i mean all right i have something else to say but i yeah it would be too um personal okay um thank you but did did you and i have any previous um soul connections at all because of course, I was, of course. we did Okay. Well, when I, I know that already. Well, yeah, but not really. I don't. I don't feel it. I, I mean, I, I can't. Not, it. It doesn't matter if you feel it or not. If it exists, it is true. Mm. Can you tell me around which time era that was? Many of them. There were several. Um, oh, I... Even in this time period, it is possible. I see. Okay. Even if I'm not. Um... <laughs> Even if, if that, you're not in this realm, yes. Sorry? Even if okay. you're not part of this realm, our connection can still be strong. Okay, that's what I was 
<laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, Don has a question. Go ahead, Don. Greetings, Madam Blessings. Um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I was part of a group that opened a Stargate uh, to seventh density to a galaxy. And I was wondering, um, they sent a wave of love to the Earth and that initiated the chrysalis of Gaia. Could you please explain what that is? The chrysalis of Gaia would be her core, basically. Um, igniting her chrysalis or her core would be helpful to her health. And so this, what you've done is sort of given her a shot of uh, uh, good health. Thank you. Was that the only question, Don? That was the only one I had at this, okay. at this time. Thank you. Great. Okay, thank you. Um, Reinhardt has a question. Yeah, hi, Medaton. I'm really happy to be able to speak to you. Um, in the last year, I activated the Metatron Actorin Healing Color. It is uh, set up in the first chakra above the head chakra. And I, I'm, in my belief, I'm can, I can create the quantum energy to use it for healing, also for healing through the heart outside. Um, can you confirm that it's really working with me? Or is it something I have to work for? Still, it is working for you. Let me explain. Above the um, crown chakra is the silver, then the gold chakra. You are working with the silver chakra, which is helpful for healing, for many different things. For healing, not only of the physical body, but of the mental and emotional portions of beings. Once you learn how to use it properly and fully. It will be helpful to uh, do all kinds of healing. And this is very interesting. And I could rerun the instructions I had run in the beginning. Then I would in enforce it more. Thank you very much for confirming it, Anatol. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Um, is there any other questions? Because we're right up the top. I'll just check to see if uh, there's a question. It's about orbs. Is there a question in the room? I believe so. OK. Come and speak up. Yes. Um, if there's uh, any guidance for the light language that I'm doing, if there's anything that you can tell me that will be helpful. or You can... are speaking ancient Sumerian. Um, you are doing it rather well you um there are some words that you are leaving out but you will get them eventually if you are still new to this language um but it's very understandable all right all right thank you you're welcome i have a quick question i guess yes come forward yeah so um i have these guardian dragons and the dragon's names are relatively different but there's this minor misunderstanding with a friend, whose name I won't mention, of course, where negative energy was sent his way, and then from a gift I gave him, so I had to take the energy out. Do you know the details of why that negative energy was sent by any chance? They used the, it, it, it's actually, the item that you gave must have been a relic. Um, and with relics, they can be charged. and. Actually, you can make anything into a relic, but if you, but the thing is, this one was already charged with the energy. You and um, when you gave it to him, his thought process was very positive, and but there was a negative charge that came to it afterwards because they wanted to destroy the friendship. They did not want that friendship to continue. So it wasn't that you did anything wrong. But you have to explain to him that they were trying to uh, interfere with the friendship. There must be something very powerful in that friendship that is part of your mission or something that you need to do together to uh, be working in the future. He understands completely. He wasn't really mad. Or Good. 
It was a necklace I carved from out a piece of wood, which possibly means there's some energy in that wood. Yes. Uh, Excellent. Know. Yes. So it can be made. It's actually the way that it was made, it was made with power in it. So it is a relic. Hmm. Maybe not as a strong one like the change the earth, but it is a relic that is uh, that can bring in positive or negative energy. Oh, very good. Thanks. You're welcome. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, I believe there is the, that is the last question because we're right up at the top of the hour. So Very well. I will leave you go. And um, many blessings to all of you. And I will give you an angelic prayer before I leave. Yes, please. Arunai. O Kurushan Zavodi, Adian Gayawan Dora, Shishin the Votita, Forna, Kendizi Sila, Shajovoneva, Pacham Shodi Biata, Jashua Kawati Yatanda, Funditira Senzagoti, Korda Fokorianda, Shishunzi Votori di Amano Ur, Mama Orekitia Sashesi, Sinemano Okawata Ashash. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you. Hello. Hello, welcome back. Thanks. Thanks, thank you. Well, we had just you, or just Tukur, and just uh, Metroton. So Tukur was here for the most of the webinar. So. Yes. All righty. All right. Well, Any thanks. closing prayers? Yes, who wants to do a closing prayer? Anyone? And Maybe I people that didn't do it in this to start. They haven't right. done it yet. Okay. I didn't hear you. No, I was saying I was going to give a, so a chance to people that had not done one before, but uh, Deb and Dawn want to do them. That's fine. Anyone in your room want to do a closing prayer? Anybody? Uh, David? Okay, we'll start with your room, and then we'll come to our room. Oh, he has to get a drink of water first. Okay, we'll start with our room. Go ahead, Deb. <laughs> Go ahead. Aika o naita o saika a uto reiste ai no aka aika o naita o saita aika o naia o uto uto aika namaste namaste and don Blessings. The first prayer said, we are in great and terrible times, and there is great love and joy to come. When these times come to a close, we will be more aware and more understanding. The second prayer is, the light is shining brightly. Please stand in it and not outside of it know that you are part of it and let it bring you the understandings you need do not doubt yourself but to edify yourself with this light and bring it to the world for you are the example of this light of uh, through god who he wants to make you great Thank you. Sorry for uh, going past the uh, interpretation. That's okay. <laughs> Go ahead, David. Is he back? Yes. Yes. It and it took a queer shana hata waha see a color or two. It ran at the cookie and mahana at the cookie shama hata limit here. So Oshuana tiana hatukua sana hatiama hata. 
ohrone atak 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 ata antuku isha mahana atia sana hatuku kuya sana hata unyana hatia na atuku kuya sawa hachia ohrone atak 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 isha mahata ne ekuku kuya isha mahata utale we etiki ya ratu kuya sana hatia mahata usha Some of you question what is the difference between God's will and the will for my life. The difference is you must understand right and wrong. If you know that you are doing right, then you probably are in God's will. If you are doing what you want, then you are probably not. Listen carefully to your heart as you move forward. For God's will is there. He will tell you what he wants you to do. Is this right for me or is this wrong for me? Let your heart speak and connect it to the brain so that you can understand what he is trying to say. But if you know right from wrong, and it is simple to know that doing right is God's will. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is there anyone else in your room? I think that's it. All right, perfect. Well, next week, uh, we will have Alex here. He's going to be teaching a class. Um, so that's going to be really exciting. And then you'll be back in two weeks, correct? Correct. And I wanted to say, I, I want to see more people come to the workshop. It's really a wonderful time. Um, if you're having trouble with finances, Please let us know. We can do a payment plan for you. Mm -hmm. But uh, we just want you to come and have a great time. Everybody that comes is always uh, uh, happy they did. And that's why we have most of the people here are repeat people from, <laughs> from last year and the year before. So yeah. uh, we want to see some new faces. So if you want to know about the workshop, go to hucolo.org and then you can read all about it. You can register. If you have to get in contact, there'll be contact information there. So please register. You've got just under a month to get to get ready. Yes. To and there's a swimming pool and we will have some wonderful activities. So it'll be yeah. Indoor so plumbing. Bring your bathing suit. And indoor plumbing is key. Indoor plumbing. That's a biggie. Yeah. We did not have that last year at uh -huh. our the last retreat in this area but we do this year so it's great well see now maybe that's the, maybe that's the thing maybe and indoor plumbing and showers and it's yeah. it's really beautiful so awesome. let us know your needs and desires so that we can accommodate you okay all right but we love you very much and we'd love to see you all right and for everyone just a reminder that starting next week our first uh our first webinar will be without using Google Hangouts, we'll be using Zoom. Um, you need to, if you want to come in the Hangout or come in the uh, the room with us now from now on, and we won't be coming back to Google Hangouts, um, you will need to have a Zoom account. It's It can be a free account. You don't have to pay anything, but just have a free account on your computer so that when we post the link, just like we post for the Google Rooms, um, you can go to the Zoom room. So it, it's going to look maybe a little different than it has in the past, but it uh, should be very good. So that's starting next week. Very yeah. cool. All right. So everyone, much love to you, and we will see you next time, next Saturday. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Namaste. Bye -bye. Love you.